this is Trevor from Telecom Training and today we're going to be looking at Cisco routers and switches. Uh, we have a lab exercise here. We're going to be setting up two local area networks with a Cisco gateway router, two switches and two local computers on each network. Um, we're going to connect these two networks together. We're going to perform ping tests from computer to local and remote networks. And we're also going to telnet to the local switch and also to the remote switch. At the bottom here, we have access to a whole group of different routers. We also have access to different types of switches. Uh, let's start with the routers. Uh, we're going to place a router right here. We're going to select two of them, the same type of routers, because we could have select any type. I just decided to select this type randomly. Um, we can also select the switch. I'll just select the 2960 because I, I like the switch. And um, let's select another one. And we're going to select some computers. PC 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, let's kind of put them in some sort of order here. All right. Um, now we're going to connect these devices together. We're going, this is the connection here, and we're going to we have all types of different connections here. Uh, this is a straight through cable, and this is a crossover. We'll se select a straight through cable because we're selecting unlike devices like a PC and a switch. If we were connecting to two PCs, for instance, we'll select a crossover um, cable. Okay. So let's select this one and we'll collect from Ethernet 0 to fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. And we'll connect from the top here again. It doesn't matter which side I connect first, 0 slash 2 to the computer fast Ethernet 0. Here you'll notice that the orange light are on the green lights are on as well it means that this side is ready this side is trying to sync up and it should be ready shortly once it's ready you'll have full communication between the computers aren't connected to this switch now as you see this side is already this side is should be sunk up in a minute but um, switches default to an open position so once you power up a switch and you power up the computers connected to that switch you have communication through the switch as you can see here so what I'm going to do here is assign some IP addresses to the switch first of all I'm going to just write some down here and these I'm just going to write these IP addresses that we're going to be using 192.168.2.3 192.168.2.4 I'll use an IP address for the switch 192.168.2.2 I'll use dot two for that and the router gateway I'll use 192.168.2.1 okay We'll set this side up later. We'll just worry about this side right now. Okay, and I also have to connect. Use a straight through cable here as well. Connect from Ethernet 0, uh, zero slash 3. By the way, I just select the first one in the group. We could select any one of these ports, by the way. I just select the first one because it's the easiest one, first one to get to. But these ports are all available to be used, okay? So, and that's the same thing I did for the other ones as well. So, I'll just go from here to the router. This is a gateway router, and I'll select the very first one as well gigabyte 0 slash 0 slash 0. Okay, now that they're all connected now, you'll notice that the bottom here is connected, the, the top one is red, and this would remain red until I set this port up. Um, so, you'll see these lights or flags here remain red, all right, for the time being. Now, let's um, set up the PCs and go to desktop, go 192.168.2.1, .2 .1. 
3. Subnet mass, 255.255.0. The gateway, I don't need it right now, but I'll set it up anyway. Okay, I don't need the gateway until I start working with the gateway router, but I'll just set it up since I'm in there right now. Okay, so I'll close that off. That is done. And I'll go to the other PC, and I'll go to desktop, and I'll type 192.168.2.4, I believe. Yeah, dot four. And the subnet mask should be the same. And gateway 192.168.2.1. Okay, so now that is done. I'll close this off as well. So now, what could I should be able to ping from this PC, PC0, right through the PC1. I don't have to do anything with this switch whatsoever in order to, to connect computers to the switch and ping or communicate same data through the switch is totally usable just by powering it up and having your PCs power up once you have power on these PCs the switch is powered up it's ready to go you don't have to do any provisioning within the switch to communicate through that switch all right so I'll prove that to you I'll do a ping test I'll go ping, ping 192.168.2.4. Okay, so I'm pinging from 0 to 1, from 2.3 to 2.4. Now you'll see replies are coming back, and I sent four packets, received four back, and that proves that I'm good from this PC to that PC. So now I'll close this, I'll click on this PC. I'll do the same thing again. Let's close that and click command prompt and go ping. Ping 192.168.2.3. Okay, enter. And I get my replies back again as well. And here I sent four packets. I received four, four packets back. So that proves that that is good as well. So now what I have to do, the reason why I have an IP address here for the switch is to set up the switch for Telnet. Um, Telnet is useful for the IT technician. The IT technician may be located, let's say, in a building on the first floor, but his switch is on the third floor, and he may have other switches, different parts of the building, right up to maybe even the 10th floor, you know? So it's very difficult for him to have his laptop and travel to each switch all the time every time you want to access that switch. That's why you have Telnet, so that he can Telnet remotely. But initially, you do have to go to this switch and set it up. I'm using a packet tracer right now. I can actually click on that, go to CLI, and I can go down, and I have, I'm in the user mode, and I can start from here and set this switch up, okay? But I want to do it where it's pretty much like in the real world. The IT technician will get his laptop, and he will take it up to, let's say, the second floor. His PC is on the first. His, this is, let's say, it is on the second or third floor. He will take this laptop up there. All right? And he will connect his laptop to the console port, which is the very first port at the top, on this switch. So how he would do that is we have a whole bunch of cables here. You get a console cable, and you connect from the switch the console cable here and we will go so this will be the console port on the switch you connect this cable you'll go over to your PC click on that and connect it to the RS232 port and now you're connected now I can get into the PC and in this case I will click on desktop and in the PC the tech will be look for its terminal software and once he finds it, he'll option it for bits per second, 9600, data bits 8, parity none, stop bits 1, flow control none. And once that's done, he'll click OK. If he has a change, this is how he'll change it. You have access to all these areas here. But anyway, this is good, so we'll just click OK. So now, once I hit enter, I'm at the same point I was there if I go through this area. But this is what the IT tech would actually see. He's in the switch right now with his laptop. And right now, he's in the user mode. And he'll go enable to get to the privilege mode. 
There's no password set right now to get from user to privilege. Later on will be set in password, but right now there's nothing set. You're getting it for the first time. Privilege modes show it show a lot of show commands. You can't do anything in the privilege node that would really affect the router, but you can show things like show IP interface brief. Okay. This is an abbreviated format of all the interfaces. Now we go from the very first interface, fast Ethernet 0 slash 1, which is this one here, and 0 slash 2 is this one. You see, they're both up, and this one is up. All the other interfaces are down because there's nothing connected to these other interfaces except for this router. And this router is down, so that's why this port is red still. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't change to green until I would be going here and provision this router. As I said, router's default to the closed state switches default to the on state they're open ready to communicate routers do not we actually have to set them up manually all right so now we have a laptop on there we have to get into the config mode in order to set up this port here that says vlan one this is where we're going to put this ip address in order to get telnet so in order to telnet we're going to go config space t config stands for configuration t stands for terminal so it's config terminal so go enter int space vlan space one this is this vlan here but you put a space in after the n and go enter okay so i'm in that interface now so now i would go ip address so this after i go on to the interface now i put the ip address in ip address space 192.168.2.2 which is this ip and put the subnet mask in go enter it took it beautiful so now at this point i have to go no shut this interface here default to down you see it's down right now i have to bring that interface up this is the only interface on the switch that you have to actually bring up because this is a virtual interface. V stands for virtual. So it's VLAN, virtual LAN. So you actually have to bring this interface up and you do that by going no shut. Okay, so now it says VLAN interface, change state to up. So the next thing we have to do now is to put the telnet command in. So we have to exit off this interface, first of all. And now we have to go line space VTY space zero space four. This is for the telnet, okay? So we go enter. And now we have to put a password in because um, anyone telnetting in is going to require a password in order to get onto your LAN. You don't want to not put a password there. I don't even think the system will let you not enter a password. But so we're going to enter a password. We're going to put password space. We're going to use Cisco, which is the worst password to use, but for the lab environment, it is perfect because you could remember it, right? All right, so we go enter. That password is set. So let's try to telnet into this switch from this PC here. Let's see what happens, okay? So I'll click on that. I'll go to the command prompt. I'll go telnet. Telnet. 192.168.2.2 Okay, I got in. I, it is asking me for password. So I'm going to type Cisco. And right now I'm at the user interface of the switch, just as I was before. Now I'll go um, enable. It wouldn't let me. It said no password set. I can get into enable mode and get right into the switch from the console port, but I can't do it till net in. The system is smart enough not to let someone in that is still net in remotely without a password. So you have to set a password. So I'll go back to the console port here. I'll get off this interface here and I'll get back to the privilege mode and I will type here password sorry enable I'll type enable space password space CISCO I'll use Cisco one to make it different from the telnet password okay so Cisco one enter 
So now if I go back to the computer now and I try to get in there again, I'll just go up arrow, put my enable command back there again and hit enter. Now it's asking for, for password. Before when I go enter, it said no password set. Now it actually asked me for password. So I'll type Cisco one, C I S C O one. Now it lets me in. Now I'm in privilege mode and I could go show IP interface brief. Now I'm in the switch and I can do anything in the switch. I can go to the config mode. I can do anything that I choose to in this switch. I'll show you config space T. Now I'm in that config mode. I can do anything from here now that I could have done from the laptop. So the IT tech can now disconnect this laptop and anytime he need to get into the switch, he can do it from any PC on that local area network. Okay, now we have done everything that we said we wanted to do on this local area network. We did not get through to the, the gateway and we did not do the other local area network and connect the two. We're going to have to do that in another video because we don't want this first video to be too long. Okay, so um, if you haven't done so as yet, please don't forget to hit on the subscribe button below and the notification icon that comes up right after you hit the subscribe button so that as soon as our next video is released which it will be within the next week and we release videos each and every week on this particular training until this particular segment of the training is completed so don't forget to click on the subscribe and notification button my name is trevor from telecom training thank you for watching.